back in the late 1990s, Bioregional was a growing organisation. We needed new offices. Uh, so, in fact, Sue Riddleston, co-founder of Bioregional, said, well, why don't we build some green offices? So we started to work with um, Bill Dunster Architects, coming up with some designs and proposals. And we asked the local authority if they knew of any sites in the area. And they came up with this big site here. So we thought, oh, well, fantastic. We can do a whole eco-village and we can live there too. We um, approached some developers. And in that process, we found the Peabody Trust a social housing provider who agreed to back the project, build it out with a combination of private housing, social housing uh, and some offices and community space. Up until then, social housing had been seen as a follower rather than a leader and this was a project that was going to show that social housing could actually be an area which showed you know, the housing sector how it could be done. The major aim for us as architects was to try to produce a building that was completely zero carbon. You've got to remember this was a time when code for sustainable homes did not exist. So it was about providing everything within renewable means within its site boundaries. This was a brownfield site. It was actually a medium contaminated piece of land. It was a former sewage site that was then just left derelict. And we were the only people to actually achieve a sale on this site that was not purely done on financial grounds but on design grounds as well. It had a good range of things going for it, so it made it an ideal choice. It's close proximity to a school, it's close proximity to transport links. When we started the site, we wanted to make the buildings themselves of as low embodied carbon as possible. We wanted this to be of a low impact, something that could be rolled out quite easily. We took a map and we drew a circle around and said, within this 35 mile radius, we want to get most of our bulk materials by weight. You'll notice the windows, as a matter of fact, are all from Denmark. That's because nobody in the UK was producing windows of the specification that we required. What we were trying to do was trying to get stuff that was readily available, bricks, concrete blocks, stuff that was heavy, with the minimum amount of transport energy possible. One of our major things on this site was actually looking at reclaimed materials rather than recycled materials. Our order of operations became, can we make it out of a reclaimed material? Something that is taken from another site and just reused again. If it can't, can it be made of a recycled material? Then if it can't, can it be made of a new material but have a low embodied impact? So we took a long time to, for example, for the kitchens to find eco-ply that was put together by benign glues that weren't going to off-gas. The major point about Bed Z is the amount of insulation in the walls. People were used to putting in 50, maybe 75 mil of insulation when we were building this building. To have something that was 300 mil seemed like a little bit ridiculous, but this was done on a mathematical calculation of a zero heating specification. So these buildings theoretically don't need a heating system. The other things that were slightly different was air tightness of the buildings. If you were trying to insulate the building very well, quite a few of your losses would actually be through the air, leaking in and out of the building. And trying to reduce that would mean that we were trying to control the ventilation as much as possible. And that's where the wind cowl came in. The wind cowl itself is just a control way of producing that ventilation. In a traditional Victorian building, you get plenty of ventilation because there's cracks around everything. But what we were trying to do was seal those up so everything that we were providing for fresh air was controlled and not uncontrolled. What we were trying to do was to provide a building model. Bedside was actually designed around 100 homes a hectare, which is what we thought was about the maximum density that you could get on a suburban sort of solution. But what did a suburban house really need? A suburban house needed a garden. Every unit on the site has its own private garden. From the air, Bedside looks quite green because we tried to reduce the amount of hard surfaces that we actually had on the building, reducing the heat island effect and having the maximum amount of vegetation. Bedside has won a number of international accolades, of course, on the energy side, for example, the Energy Globe Award, which was presented by Mikhail Gorbachev, but also on the architectural side. And so Bill Dunster Architects were shortlisted, for example, for our top architectural award, the Sterling Prize, uh, a few years ago. So, you know, it has um, change people's perceptions not just on the energy front but also how green design can be at the very forefront of design as well. Mm -hmm.